So I realized that I made a zero product property video. Um, so if you're factoring quadratics, for instance, and you get it into um, the idea of sort of an x plus 3 times x plus 5, well, if I want to see uh, solutions to quadratic equations deal with the idea of where does it hit the x-axis. That's just how it's identified. That's where our solutions, that's what it means. So usually it would mean this, and you'd have some sort of a graph like this. Just lie to yourself and pretend that's what it would look like. I'm not the best. Obviously, this thing is all over the place. It's, just, it's very windy in this math problem, I guess. Anyway, um, I need to find those solutions. So in order for that to happen, if it says y equals, for instance, or whatever I need it to do, um, all I want to do is make sure that these, uh, the x value, the terms, one of them is 0. Because if this one is 0, uh, x plus 5 means 0, this entire term, not just x. Uh, not just x, but x plus 5 is equal to 0. Whatever this is, doesn't matter, because it's 0 times this. So what we're going to do is find the solutions by just setting the terms themselves equal to 0. What can we do to make that term equal 0? So we do x plus 3 equals 0, and we'd solve, and we'd end up with... I tried to make myself do it without showing the steps, but I'm just incapable of doing it, I guess. I don't know. My brain has a block in it. Um, I should get that checked by a doctor. Anyway, so that's how the product, a zero product property works. And that's why it works, because if you set it equal to zero, it means y is equal to zero, which is exactly where the x-axis is located. Now, uh, ongoing. I've done video about that. What I haven't done any video about uh, that I can find anyway is what happens when it's not equal to zero. Well, you can't solve them when they're just equal to a different number. So what you need to do is just make some slight movements in terms of, you know, mathematically appropriate oper opposite operations changes and then solve. So, uh, for instance, in this one, I need to get rid of this negative 8. So I'm going to say, okay, plus 8 because that's how you get rid of negative 8. You're at negative 8 and move 8 up, that kind of thing. Those cancel out. This goes away, this goes away, and it ends up with k squared minus 4k is equal to 0. So what can I do with this? Well, I can factor out a k. That's one thing I can do. If nothing else, I can do that. And then set these equal to 0. So k is equal to 0, and k minus 4 is equal to 0. So add 4 and get k is equal to 4. So there are my two solutions for doing it. So I need to make, sometimes I need to make those changes. There you go. Just to prove that was right. Um, from here, plus 3. Or I've got this positive 3 over here. So I need to move it. So just subtract it. I mean, it's not advanced rocketry. Although this might be part of advanced rocketry. I don't really know tons about it. So then I just need to say, okay, what, now I can do traditional factoring. What two values multiply to give me 16 so I can do a factor list if I want which I really didn't want to but I'm doing it anyway so whatever those are my factors um, my first sign of course tells me that the um, or my second sign I'm sorry the plus here this sign the second one of the two tells me that they're both going to be the same the first sign in my answered factored form my x plus or in this case v I guess uh, v v and this sign tells me that they are uh, both negative. By the way, the most difficult of the setting the signs thing, if you're not really comfortable with that, is this setup. Because they are different signs in the problem, but the answer they are the same. What you have to remind yourself is the second term is always the two factors that you're going to put right here multiplied together. So if you have a negative times a negative, you can get a positive. If you have a positive times a positive, you can get a positive. But if you have a negative times a positive, there's no way you can get this. So if this is positive, it has to be the same thing. This one just tells you what it is. Now, if the signs are the same, I'm going to add my factors to get 10. So 8 and 2 is 10, and since it's negative and negative, negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. That's exactly what I want. So now I'm ready to do zero product property. So I'm going to force myself not to write all the steps out. That's terrible looking. It's like I'm, my brain is trying to sabotage. V is equal to 8 v is equal to 2. Now another a little bit more complicated one, but not really, I mean it's not super difficult, is one are ones like this. What happens if you have a k term on the other side or a, a variable term? Same exact thing, it changes absolutely nothing. You just have to remind yourself that you do not want to combine terms that are not alike. So this is not combining like terms situations. Oh, plus 10, forgot that. Sorry 10, didn't mean to dis 
guard you or think that you weren't important. You certainly are. Um, and this thing tells me that both the signs are the same. This tells me they're both plus. I know that 5 times 2 is 10, so I'm going to skip that drama and just set the problem up, then set equal to 0. See? Right back to it. I'm the worst. So for the rest of these, I'm not going... Maybe the last one. I have like four more, three more, but I'll go through them very quickly. I won't even solve them. I'll just uh, set them up. And just to show you that that was the right answer. And the other one, in case you were one of those types that wonders about such things. Um, so in this one, I would move both of these because it's much easier to do if you don't have a negative a squared. So I would say plus 2a and I'm going to double step here. I usually don't. I, I think that's very scary. Um, but plus 2a minus 35. So it ends up being a squared plus 2a minus 35 equals 0. And then you'll just do your factor lists and realize that the signs are opposite. You're trying to make plus 2, that kind of thing. So you're going to use positive 7 and negative 5 and then you'll end up with uh, negative 7, positive 5 for your answer. See? Um, and finally, this type. This is the more advanced type, and I'll just do one of them and be done with it. Uh, it's not that much harder. It's the same exact thing, really. I'm not going to double step this time. 7x. Each step deserves its own. Now, x squared minus 5x, because negative 12 plus 7. Then I'm left with this. Still not equal to 0. And you can't do that where it's equal to 6 and then you set them equal to 6. That doesn't work, just in case anybody thought that was a thing you could do, because that's not how solutions are defined. And I'll work this one out to a conclusion. This thing tells me the signs are the same. This tells me they're both negative. So x minus, x minus. Factors for 6 are 1 and 6. 2 and 3, and if the signs are the same, you add the factors to get that middle number, of course. So it's 2 and 3, and it's negative 2. Negative 3 gives me that negative 5 that I want. Now I just set these equal to 0. x equals 3. And that's really it. I mean, uh, if you, by the way, it doesn't always work out, in case you haven't seen the other zero product property video um, or solving quadratics using factoring, it doesn't always work out so nice as this. If I end up with 3x minus 2 as a factor, it's still not that much more complicated, but you'll end up doing plus 2, of course, divided by 3, and your factor is going to be x is equal to 2 thirds. But in most in early cases you get this kind of look but I just hadn't covered it before and I wanted to make sure that I um, had it in there for you so thanks